Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask a question, which I'll flip in here for you guys, and he wants to know if you have at least a hundred pounds of excess body fat to lose, is it better to focus more on weightlifting or more on cardio to help lose it? So uh, let me put on my plus five hat of weapon smithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about this. All right, this is something I have a lot of personal experience with, because two different times in my life. Uh, for a couple of reasons, I had gained an enormous amount of weight and had to lose all of it. And one of those was when I spent 10 months in uh, sick in bed. I gained 100 pounds while I was in bed sick. And what sucks is that before I got sick, I mean, I was uh, pretty much squatting 550 and benching 400 pounds at the time when I got sick. So it really sucked to have fallen that, that far. Um, but what I found personally is that it is better to focus more on cardio in that situation. You need to do both. I don't want people to get the idea that it's not important to lift weights and do cardio. If you have 100 pounds to lose, you damn well better be doing both. Um, it's gonna be in your best interest to do both. But you need to let the cardio make up the majority of your uh, calorie deficit. In fact, it's pretty easy to do it with cardio when you weigh that much. So let me break down kind of the whys of what's going on there. All right, well you need to understand from the weightlifting end, there have been plenty of studies out there that show uh, that people who lose weight without doing any resistance training, lose any significant amount of weight, that they can expect approximately a fourth of that weight they lose to be muscle mass, all right? A fourth. So that means that first 40 pounds is gonna be 10 pounds of muscle loss. That's gonna have a tremendous impact on your metabolic rate. I mean, to lose 10 pounds of muscle means that you're gonna, not just your BMI is gonna go down, your base metabolic rate is gonna go down a little bit. Honestly, a pound of muscle doesn't burn as many calories as people think just laying around. It burns a little, few calories, few calories. 10 pounds, you're talking about 30, 40 calories difference. But it's when you get up and you start moving. It's when you're moving around. And as you lose weight, your body tends to lose muscle uh, also because when you're that big, you have more muscle than the average person. You've eaten tons of food. Uh, you've eaten, created all those anabolic hormones, all that surplus calories, and you're moving around a big, fat, heavy body. That builds muscle. The average really obese person has more muscle than the average skinny person by a pretty, pretty significant amount. So as you start losing muscle, losing muscle is normal, actually, when you're losing weight uh, without resistance training. And then your body weight's going down, so you're creating less need for that muscle because you're not moving around as heavy of a weight. Uh, so it's doubly easy for people who are very, very obese like that to lose muscle mass when they start losing weight. And here's the thing, you need to remember, every pound of muscle that you lose is also a pound of fat that you didn't lose. Your goal when you're 100 pounds overweight is to get rid of 100 pounds of fat. You're wanting it to be all fat, not 75 pounds of fat and 25 pounds of muscle. Uh, but yeah, maintaining your metabolism is gonna become tremendously important if you wanna keep that weight loss uh, going continually because it's going to get harder and harder as you lose weight because your metabolism is going to go down. You know what? Even losing 50 pounds of pure fat, if you lose no muscle at all, even if you gain muscle, you can expect your metabolism to go down a little bit. You burn a lot of calories slinging around an extra 50 pounds of fluff. All right, you do. That burns through calories. And anyone who doesn't believe that, who thinks I'm making that up, uh, go put a 50 pound backpack on or, or all over your body. Get like a weighted vest that weighs 50 pounds and put that over your body and go walk around the block with it a couple times and come back and tell me you didn't burn a hell of a lot more energy than you did at just your normal body weight. All right, it's basically like humping a big sack around or a rucksack. You burn through a tremendous amount of calories carrying that extra weight. So losing weight at all will slow your metabolism just due to the change in body weight. But when you start losing muscle mass, it's doubly bad because the muscle tissue itself doesn't just have to carry its own weight around because that burns calories just like fat does, but the muscle tissue burns through more calories moving around also because it has uh, energy needs. So when you start losing muscle mass, that has an extremely negative effect on your metabolism. You're already going to go down from, from losing the fat. So if you can maintain muscle, and the only way to do that is going to be by uh, lifting weights and consuming enough protein. All right, so you need to be weightlifting. You need to be weightlifting enough to stimulate growth. And here's the beauty of it. You can double down on that for someone who needs to lose that much weight because when you have 100 pounds of extra fat to lose, your body already has a calorie surplus. 
As far as your muscles are concerned, you have plenty of surplus energy and calories to recover with to help you build muscle. As long as you get enough protein in your diet, you're going to have no trouble gaining muscle even if you're losing two or three pounds a week if you're that fat. All right, you can be losing two or three pounds of fat a week and still be gaining muscle. And here's the way to look at it. Every ounce of muscle that you gain also used up energy from your fat stores. All right? So by gaining muscle itself, you are losing fat more quickly. So doing enough weightlifting uh, to gain muscle when you're losing weight is really going to help you up your game because it's going to tap into your body fat. Uh, if you're already in a calorie deficit, it's got to get energy somewhere to go through the muscle building process. Building muscle requires energy. Recovery from training requires energy. Uh, it will pull it from your fat stores if that's all you have available, if you're getting enough protein, all right? So it doesn't have to break down pro uh, tissue proteins for any real reason. If you get enough protein, your body will do it just fine when you're that fat. It's not a problem. But up to a certain point, and what you need to understand, you're not going to gain muscle beyond a certain threshold. Uh, so it's training for hours a day, trying to lift weights for an hour a day or something, isn't going to stimulate more growth. You could probably get away with three 30-minute lifting sessions a week, gain as much muscle as you're going to gain while in a calorie deficit. If you're trying to burn through extra calories while weightlifting, it's not the best way to do it. You're going to burn through a lot more total calories if you focus on doing cardio. When you're that obese, you can't do high-intensity cardio. You're going to need to do less cardio. Uh, but here's the thing. Going and walking for an hour every day, if you're already weightlifting, is going to burn through a lot of calories. Meaning, uh, someone who's that overweight can generally find that if they keep their diet on point and they just eat a bunch of filling foods and they avoid eating a bunch of garbage and fat and sugar and everything, they're probably going to be able to eat till they're full every day. And if they're combining the weightlifting, which already gives them a, me a metabolism boost, Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied today, guys. Combined with walking around for an hour, they're going to burn through an enormous amount of calories. In fact, when I mean an enormous amount of calories, someone who's doing that or someone who's putting in riding a stationary bike while they play video games for a couple hours a day, who's lifting weights three days a week, who's got 100 pounds of extra fat, they're probably going to have a maintenance calories of over 3,000 calories a day, 3,500. Some of those people might even burn 4,000 calories a day. All right, so if you think about that, someone who's weighing 300 pounds because they have 100 pounds of extra fat, who's building muscle in the weight room, and they're doing a couple hours of low intensity cardio, moving 300 pounds of mass around every day for two hours of low intensity cardio, yeah, like 4,000 calories. That means they could probably eat a 3,000 calorie a day diet and be burning through an extra thousand calories a day. All right, just that cardio alone for someone who weighs that much is gonna burn at least a thousand calories. It's gonna burn at least a thousand. Two hours of low intensity cardio, oh yeah, thousand calories burned for someone that heavy, if not more. In some cases, a lot more. So that person could literally be eating some of your guys' bulking calories and lose weight. Well, when you think about it, that's a hell of a lot of brown rice, chicken breast, and broccoli. So if they're eating a high fiber, high protein, low fat diet, and you think about that from a satiety perspective, uh, yeah, 3,000 calories is a lot of food and someone that big could get away with that and do just what I described and literally have a 1,000 calorie deficit every day. Well, what does that mean? That means they're going to lose about two pounds of fat every week. Well, here's where you double down on it. All that calorie is going to burn through two pounds of fat every week, but they're weightlifting enough to probably gain a couple ounces of muscle every week, right? Where's that uh, calorie from that muscle coming from? Probably coming from their fat stores. So if they're going down on the scale two pounds every week, but they're gaining three ounces, four ounces of muscle every week, not unreasonable, four ounces of muscle, that's a pound of fat a month, a pound of muscle a month. That's not that much for new games. That's easily doable for new games. That means they're also losing another pound of fat every month just from the muscle gain alone, just from the energy that takes to build. So instead of losing muscle, they're gaining muscle. And that's the beauty of doing something like that. It's important to combine the two together to get a synergistic effect because that is what you are doing. 
you're using the weight training to keep your metabolism a little higher and to make sure that everything that you're losing is fat and that you're gaining muscle instead of fat, right? Which means that again, even more fat will be lost because of the muscle gain. Then you're doing all the cardio to burn through an enormous amount of calories so that the scale weight goes down and you just melt through your body fat like a blowtorch cutting through butter. And I know that sounds like an extreme analogy, but it's almost like that. I mean, when you're talking about two pounds of fat lost every single week, that's a lot. All right, that is a lot. You gotta remember a gallon of fat weighs seven pounds. So that means every three and a half weeks, they're burning an entire gallon of blubber off their body. I mean, that's almost blowtorch light cutting through it. Uh, but that's exactly what happens in that situation. That's exactly what you see. Um, so again, it's about doing both. I think it is absolutely important that you focus on both, but the difference becomes which one becomes more important for the overall weight loss? The cardio and the reason, the reason for that because if you're weightlifting and getting enough protein, when you're that overweight, you're going to gain muscle no matter what. All right, you are going to gain muscle mass as long as you're getting stronger on your lifts. There's a limit on how much muscle you can gain. There's not gonna be a realistic limit on how many calories you can burn doing cardio. So that means the more focus you put on the cardio, the faster you're gonna lose fat. Because like I said, if you're gonna do two hours every single day, you're probably gonna lose a couple pounds of fat a week. That's probably a thousand calories. Well, what happens if you have an occasional day where you're able to squeeze in an extra hour? You feel good enough to do even an extra hour of walking or at a brisk walk around the neighborhood or an extra hour on your bike every single day, all right? That's probably gonna be another 500 calories you're gonna burn through. There isn't going to be a practical limit on that and when you have that much fat to lose you can burn through enormous amounts of body fat through doing low intensity physical activity you can burn through enormous amounts of fat through activity fairly easily without getting that fatigued from it and without compromising your health because there are things that you could do that will compromise your health with fat loss like that but doing extra low intensity cardio is not going to be dangerous for you. It's not gonna risk anything. All it's gonna do is when you say, well, today I can do even more of that. All it's gonna do is take the, the fat off of you quicker. While still allowing you to eat a pretty uh, decent amount of food by most standards. So that's the beauty of it. When you're really, really overweight like that, doing just long bouts of cardio is a fantastic way to just burn through extra calories. Again, as long as the weight training and the protein intake are sufficient to maintain your muscle and hopefully help you gain more muscle. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense of why I'm saying it's more important to focus on the cardio even though the, the weight training is absolutely critical. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.